Hi there. Today we're doing section 4.1 notes about multiplying polynomials. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to answer how do I multiply polynomials? First of all, a polynomial is an algebraic expression including different exponent terms and constants. More specifically, a monomial is an algebraic expression with one term. And a binomial is an algebraic expression with two terms. Trinomials are algebraic expressions with three terms. Here's an example of a monomial, 4x or 3. An example of a binomial would be 2x to the 7th plus 3. The, paren uh, sorry, the addition or in a subtraction sign uh, separates terms. I'm using a new fancy app and I struggle with it sometimes. So there's the two different terms. Let's try a trinomial, something like 4x squared minus. So that's indicating that we have a new term coming. Uh, 4x plus, indicating a new term again, 3. So again, we have 1, 2, 3 terms. Trinomial. All right. Let's try some multiplying of polynomials. So, we're going to distribute the negative 7 into the parentheses. So, I get negative 7x squared plus 28x minus 14. Oh, yeah, looks good. Next, we distribute over here. Now, here, let me go a little bit slower this time. When we just look at this first multiplication, I'm taking 3x times 2x squared. So what we do there is just, and if it helps, write it out. 3x times 2x squared. You know what? I'm going to write that down for all these. And then we're going to subtract 3x times x. And then we're going to add 3x times 5. All right. So for this first multiplication, you multiply the coefficients together, because really this is the same as 3 times 2 times x times x squared. Notice I, I listed all four factors that are being multiplied, but 3 times 2 is 6. You can rearrange multiplication. And then x times, let me rephrase that, x to the, ooh, I don't know what that is. x to the 1 times x to the 2 is x to the 3. So there's that term. Minus 3 times x to the 1 times x to the 1. That would be 3 times x to the 2. When you multiply the same bases together, you add the powers. Last but not least, again, you can rearrange this. I'll actually show it this time. You know, this is the same as 3 times 5 times x. So it's easier for you to think of, all right, yeah, it's definitely 15x. Sometimes people accidentally add when we multiply the coefficients together. That's not what we want to do. All right. Let's try multiplying a binomial times a binomial. And when that happens, in fact, I'm wearing a t-shirt right now that says FOIL, because it's just a math term that we use, uh, to make sure that you do every single multiplication that you need to here, you could think of this as multiplying the first terms in the parentheses together, the outermost terms together, the innermost terms together, and then the last terms in the parentheses together. So, that is the first term times the first term. And x times x is x squared. Those are the outer terms, the far left and the far right. And that's x times 4, which is 4x. Really, we, you could also think of, this as mass, uh, you could think of this as massive distribution. So, I've taken the first x and I multiplied it into everything in the other parentheses. Now I need to take this 2 and multiply it by everything in the other parentheses. So 2 times x is 2x. That's also your inner multiplication, the most inner terms. And then again, last but not least, we have the last term in the parentheses times the last term in the parentheses. And that is 8. Now, we want to simplify this a little further because we can combine 2x and 4x. So the best answer is x squared plus 6x plus 8. There we are. All right. Let's try that again. Distribute the 2x to the 3x and the 2x to the 5. So we get 2 times 3 is 6x 
x times x, sorry, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. So that gives us 6x squared. Then we have 2x times 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. And bring the x along. Now let's go to distributing the, careful, that's a negative 1. If you like to do a little chop slash there, or add in the opposite, you could. So it's really a negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3x, and then a negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5. So when we combine like terms, we get, the like terms are right there, the 10x and the negative 3x. We get 6x squared uh, plus 7x minus 5. That's a bad looking 5. Let's try that again. There we are. All right, example number 5. Remember, 5 squared, folks, means 5 times 5. You take the base and you multiply it by itself, in this case, 2 times. Our power is 2, so we're going to take the base and multiply it by itself a total of 2 times. But now our base is this 3x minus 1. So we have 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. So we actually are multiplying a binomial, 3x minus 1, times another binomial. So... Same idea here. Distribute the 3x to the 3x and the 3x to the negative 1. So 3x times 3x is 3 times 3 is 9, and x times x is x squared. And then 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Now distribute the negative 1 through. So this gives you negative 3x, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. We can combine like terms right there, so we get 9x squared. And then again, when we combine like terms, we add the coefficients together. So here you get negative 6x plus 1. Final answer. All right. I'm going to write something down here, and then I'm actually going to erase it. So I'm going to, because there's several ways that you can multiply this together. Uh, I'm going to erase this in a second. But so really, you know, to do this, if you're very organized and you're uh, neat you can just distribute this x through to all three terms, write all those new parts down, and then distribute this 3 through to all three terms, write that down, and then combine like terms. And you'll have your new final answer. Um, so much like what we did up above, just a little more multiplying, a little longer answer. Another way to go about it, and you can use this with the examples up above, is you can take this, one of your factors, and write it out. This is kind of like Punnett square style, we call this. It helps us make sure we multiply every factor with every factor that needs to get multiplied in the other one. So, I listed my factors from one of the factors, or I listed the parts of the factors, or the terms of the factors there. Now I'm going to list the other terms in the other factor across the other way. So I'm going to have x squared, 3x, and 2. And so I'm going to have these six multiplications that I need to do. So this box right here that I'm circling is what happens when I get x squared times x. That's x to the third. This box is what I get when I take 3x times x. And that's 3x squared. And then this box is what I get when I take x times 2 or 2 times x, which is 2x. Down here, that's 3 times x squared. Right there. If you don't know where I'm getting these things from, from this green circle, look straight up to the top. The heading on this box is 3x. So I'm taking that 3x way up there and multiplying it by the 3 to the left. Really, you kind of like you're saying, hey, I'm taking this part times that part. And so we get 9x. And then last but not least, again, this 3 times this 2, and you get 6. All right, now we just need to answer, write our answer in standard form, which means look for the highest power, the highest degree, and write that term first. The highest degree is x to the third. The next highest degree would be x to the second. Do we have any of those? Yes, I've got 3x squared right there and 3x squared right there. Hey, those are like terms, so I can combine them. That gives you 6x squareds. The next would be x to the 1, which is just like an x. So that's 2x and 9x. Combine those together, you get 11x. And last but not least, 6. 
there we are. There is our final answer there. That method, I think, is especially nice when you have a larger multiplication that you need to do. And holy cow, speaking of large multiplication, look at this one right there. So we've got x squared, negative x, negative 7. It's really important that you, when things are negative, that you write down that negative very, with it, very large, very close to it. We're multiplying that by x squared, 3x, and 2. So we get x to the 4th, x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. Take this x squared, multiply it by this 3x, you get 3x to the 3rd. Take that same x squared, but now multiply it by this 2, you get 2x squared. All right, next line, multiply this negative x by x squared, which is negative x to the third. Then you get 3x times negative x, which is negative 3x squared. And then 2 times negative x, which is negative 2x. Last but not least, uh, multiply. Let's see, I'm kind of running out of colors. So it's kind of a goofy color combination here. Multiply this negative 7 by the terms up top. So negative 7x squared, negative 21x, negative 14. Right, so we're not done, though. Now we just need to take... These are the parts of the answer. Now write your answer in standard form. Start with the highest power. X to the fourth. Whew, that's the highest power for sure. X to the fourth. Next highest power would be x to the power of 3. There's one of them right there, or a negative one, of them, negative one of them right there, and then a positive 3 of them right there. So we combine negative 1 and positive 3. makes positive 2 x to the third. Next, combine your squareds, or powers of 2. Oh, there's three clumps of those. When you add negative 7, negative 3, and positive 2, you get negative 8 x squared. Next would be x to the 1. There's negative 21 x to the 1 and negative 2 x to the 1. So that's a negative 23 x. And then last but not least, negative 14. There we are. Those are your notes for multiplying polynomials together.